Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. I have another Monday quarterback video for you. I'm going to play the entirety of this video, and then I'm going to go back and talk about things that I think were done wrong or things that I think were done right. Without further ado, here we go. The information, audio, and visuals you are about to see are intended to provide details of an officer-involved shooting which began on the 13th of June, 2021 at about 3.58 p.m. in the 1500 block of East 3rd Street. Conclusions about the officer's actions with regard to law and policy will not be made until all facts are known and the investigation is complete. An investigation into the use of force is being conducted to determine whether the actions of the officers are in compliance with law, the criminal investigation, and department policy, the administrative investigation. At the conclusion of the criminal investigation, all of the details will be released to the Kern County District Attorney's Office for independent review. Bakersfield Police Department officers are equipped with body-worn cameras. The body cameras do not capture everything the officers saw or experienced and do not encompass the entirety of the investigation, which includes witness interviews, forensic processing, and administrative review. This footage is being released to the community in an effort to provide clarity and transparency. This video is graphic in nature and highly disturbing. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. On Sunday, June 13, 2021, at 3.58 p.m., an officer conducted a vehicle code enforcement stop in the 1500 block of East 3rd Street on a vehicle with no license plates. This is the body camera footage of that officer. Uh, the reason I stopped you, you don't have a license plate on your car? Well, I know, I was giving that right now. Like, I was in the process of giving it. Oh, okay. Do you have a registration for it? Uh, I don't, I left it at home. Okay. Right. Um, do you have, because I got to confirm like it's not stolen or anything. Uh, do you have your license on you? I, I don't. Okay. I don't have it on me. It's, I, it's, I actually put it under my sister's name. Okay. Do you have um, a license? Uh, I got my license suspended. suspended. What's your name? All right. So I was going to let the whole video play and then come back and hit the rewind. I think I'm just going to go from here. So this dude says he was in the process of getting his um, his license plate. Um, whatever. Replay that. Uh, the reason I stopped you, you don't have a license plate on your car? Oh, I know. I was busy getting that right now. Like, I was in the process of getting it. Uh, in the process of getting it. So, <laughs> to me, the process... Being in the process of getting your license plate would imply you're standing in line at the building where you get your damn license plate, not driving around without a license plate. So it's pretty common to hear people come up with these stupid ass excuses on why they're breaking the law. And as I was watching this, that was just something that popped in my head. And I was worried that I would just forget to mention it later on throughout the video. Because it is a 15-minute video and there's a lot of stuff in there. But right off the bat, uh, I was in the process of getting it. Bullshit. No, you were not in the process of getting that damn license plate. You were driving around thinking he was going to get away with it again. Because probably multiple times drove around and got away with it. It just so happened the day his ass got caught. And he came up with that lame-ass excuse of, I was in the process of getting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Whatever, buddy. Okay, do you have a registration? For uh, I, I don't. I left it at home. Okay. Uh, I left it at home. Uh, okay. That's another bullshit one. Um, do you have, because I got to confirm like it's not stolen or anything. Uh, uh, do you have your license on you? I, I don't. Okay. Do you have a license? Uh, I got my license suspended. Suspended license. Boom. Um, and right before that, he's like, "Oh, I actually put it under my sister's name." Okay. Why? <laughs> why would you be getting a car of your own and putting it under? Excuse me. Someone else's name. Uh, right from the get-go, this guy's throwing up all kinds of red flags. 
red flags indicating that this guy is all about some fuckery and doing shit that he's not supposed to be doing. Now, he gives his name and they later find out that uh, the name and stuff that he gave him was completely fake. Ended. What's your name? Uh, what's your last name? Your birthday? Oh. Okay. Um, I'm gonna just open the door to get the VIN. Okay. Cause it's on the door. Okay. Can you write on the back? I'll handle tax oh, five seven eight. Who's in the car with you? Okay. Oh. Are they able to really jump? Oh. Hi, how you guys doing? Uh, it should be over. Do you have a license then? No. Do you know where the VIN is at? Um, oh, yeah. So, this is just me. I'm just not the biggest fan of uh, this guy who's just thrown up all these red flags of being not a good person. Um, him throwing up all these red flags and he's just bending over, uh, notepad in one hand, ink pen, and ink pen in the other, trying to find a VIN number. Um, while this guy's able to do whatever the hell he kind of wants to do. Uh, I would have preferred that this officer have um, back up there before he just starts getting himself into these kind of positions. And you're going to see here in a second that he really gets himself in a position that I really don't care for to see. So this position I don't really care a whole lot for. Uh, we later find out that this is a stolen vehicle. <laughs> Go figure. Um, and as we know, because of the title of the video involved shooting, this dude is going to shoot the cop. So. I'm not a big fan of where he's standing at and him being all by himself and both of his hands are occupied with non-fighting tools and he is focused on fine print um, on that VIN. So if you've never sat there and tried to write down a VIN number, a VIN number is really long. It's a, it's a series of letters and numbers and you really got to pay attention to what you're looking at and what you're writing because it's a very long sequence of letters and numbers and you really got to focus on it. And with him really focusing on that, looking at the VIN, writing it down, looking down, writing, however, you know, he processes information, looks at it. Uh, he's not fully able to focus on that guy and see what the hell he's doing. It would have been a whole lot better if a backing officer was there to be able to keep eyes on this dude while he checks the VIN number. Does anyone with a license able to come? Um, yeah, his, his mother's coming. His okay. Mother's okay. His mom's coming? Yeah. Okay. Because I can't let you drive without a license. Okay. But okay. if you could give them a call to come, or else, like, I had to tow the car if you don't have a license. And I don't want to tow your car for 30 days. You have a baby back here. Yeah. You know? This officer's being uh, pretty nice, real polite. And is really wanting to do them a favor by not towing the vehicle and it being gone for, for 30 days. That's a, that's a pretty good solid thing that he's doing for these people. Um, 
he's obviously not coming off as an asshole or anything like that. Um, this whole interaction, he's been nothing but nice, very cordial. Um, really, I mean, there's no um, justification from this dude in the driver's seat right now to to really have um, any bad ill uh, towards this officer, other than the fact that, you know, he's an officer and he just caught him doing, um, illegal things. Um, but his whole interaction is there, you know, pretty nice guy, I think. And he's <laughs> going out of his way to, to let someone come get the vehicle instead of him having it towed. And I'm assuming the 30 days thing is, it must be impounded for 30 days or something like that. Uh, and that's, that's, pretty nice of him to, to go out of his way and do that, and then for this dude in the driver's seat to become an asshole and later shoot at him. Alright, well I'll be right back, okay? The officer returned to his patrol vehicle to conduct a records and status check of the vehicle and identifying information the driver provided. The records check revealed that the vehicle was stolen. The name and birth date provided to the officer was fake. A firm occupied. Now, I'm not really sure uh, how long this whole process took. Uh, there's no time stamp within the video to kind of indicate uh, how much time has elapsed between when he was talking to him and this point right now. Excuse me. Um, Obviously, you know, running checks and stuff, it doesn't take, you know, 10 seconds to do. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to do that. And it looked like he came in over from the passenger side of his vehicle to sit down and get on his computer. Um, and then obviously got back out and came around to the uh, driver's side to, to do what he's about to do. Driver! Driver! Roll down the window! Turn off the vehicle! Watch his brake lights. Bye bye. Now, let me back this up real quick. Watch the officer's gun. Boom. Right between his legs. Doesn't even put it in the holster. Puts it between his legs. Then he picks it out and puts it back in the holster. Replay that for you. Three Metro One, failure to yield. So I'll just say that was a stupid fucking mistake. Um, I don't know what the hell possessed him to, to take that gun and, and stick it uh, in his crotch area. And then try and take off in the car. Uh, <laughs> not the not the the brightest move to me. Um, should have automatically went into the holster itself. That is the obviously the best place uh, for your holster to go into. I'm sorry, your holster to go into for your firearm to go into. Um, trying to stick it between your legs or anything like that. It's not a great idea. And We'll jump back in time and go back to Miami-Dade, where the FBI got into a shootout. Uh, one of those officers tucked um, their gun under their leg during the chase, and when they crashed, the gun came flying out and went into the floorboard, um, and the the officer wasn't able to, um, to get to it. Um, Actually, one of them, I think it was because obviously seats back then were, were a little bit different. Bucket seats weren't like they are, or the seats weren't now like they are now. Now that we got bucket seats back then, they just got pretty much big old uh, bench seats. And he had it under his leg, they hit, and um, his car door came open. And he mistakenly believed that his gun went flying out of the car uh, when the car door was open, when really it had got... Uh, wedged um, down in the uh, uh, floor area and that was his main gun that he had to fight with and he couldn't find it in the middle of a fucking gunfight and I believe if I remember correctly he had to go down to his backup gun so 
this guy right now <laughs> who put that gun in between his legs um, could have made a very fatal uh, mistake. And, you know, what if this uh, suspect vehicle had just abruptly stopped or he hit something, whatever, and that gun goes flying out from his legs and goes into the floorboard area, and then boom, he starts taking rounds, and the officer, uh, in the middle of adrenaline rush and everything, just doesn't know where the gun went, and he has to hop out of the vehicle, and if he has a backup gun, then that's the only gun he's going to be able to get out in the fight. If he doesn't have a backup gun, then he's going to have to pull the Nike drill and run like hell. So, uh, your guns should always go in the holster, not between your legs. We're going to be southbound MLK, approaching Texas. Speeds are going to be 50, no traffic, no pit. Three of Metro One, Universal Southbound MLK, approaching Brandage. 901T, 901T, Brandage, and MLK. 901T, Brandage, MLK, traffic is starting to win. So, I'm not really, we obviously don't get to see how the suspect vehicle crashes or anything like that. It, to me, does not appear as though the officer um, initiated any kind of pit stop or, or hit the vehicle or anything like that. But this is where the, the suspect vehicle comes into a resting position, and he is pretty damn close up on it. And as he exits his vehicle, or is in the midst of exiting his vehicle, bad guy shoots at him. So he goes to the rear of the vehicle, putting his entire vehicle between him and the bad guy. Um, so vehicles. Uh, see here. So, uh, car doors um, don't stop bullets. Um, movies, Hollywood, has conditioned people to think that hiding behind the car door is going to stop a bullet. The car door is not going to stop a bullet. Um, you can take a little twenty-two and very easily shoot through an entire car door and it go through... Um, or go into the other car door, and depending on some of the make and models and how much um, uh, door paneling material there is and stuff like that, uh, you could get a through and through on both doors with a 22. Um, and that's just a little tiny 22. Uh, so vehicles are not the greatest thing to use for cover. And obviously, the engine block is a nice big uh, chunk of metal that can stop bullets relatively well and the um, the wheels um, the axles and whatnot um, are some other things that can stop bullets pretty decently um, the car doors no they don't they don't they're they're shit they're worthless and they don't stop bullets very well and so what he's doing and I don't you know this could just be um, you know him in the position or he could have been um, trained to know this or to, or to do this but he's putting the entire vehicle uh, between him and the bad guy so from front of the vehicle to the trunk you've got engine block in the very front uh, dashboard after that car seats after that and then and in a police car then you got a cage then you have rear seats and then you have the trunk wall contents in the trunk and then the trunk lid itself that a bullet would have to go through so that is a lot of shit for a round to have to pass through to reach to him glass front windshield round goes through it we know it's going to deflect in some way we just don't know exactly how um within also the police cage 
you know, whatever design it is, you know, it may hit wire mesh in the middle or it may hit the plexiglass, whatever. Uh, if it makes it through, then it's got to hit the rear windshield. And we know that the rear windshield is going to deflect it somehow as well. We just don't know exactly how. It's left, right, up, down, just some type of deflection. So he's doing good about putting that amount of space or uh, cover in between him and the bad guy. And he is obviously working his way um, around the vehicle. He could be a little bit closer, but uh, he is utilizing all that vehicle to his advantage. 998, 998. Then he starts to run after the guy. Remember one nine nine eight. We're gonna be running. Put the gun down. Put the gun down. So we can see that he's over here, but just like all other, um, or most of all the other uh, body cam footage videos of shootings, you just can't make out a whole lot of detail. Now I don't know what it is in particular that caused this officer to want to shoot at him. Um, it could be that the gun started coming up, pointing in his general direction, but the officer decided to fire at him. He fired a few rounds and then stopped. Put the gun down! Now me, again, you can't really tell a whole lot about this guy other than he's right here and he's still armed. Um, and the officer... When he did shoot at him, like I said, he could have seen something that we just cannot clearly see in the video. And what he was doing, he may have stopped after he had fired at him, um, which sometimes that happens. You know, bad guys get shot at and they're like, oh shit, I shouldn't have done that. Um, and what he did, he may have stopped doing and is just now running. And this officer may be thinking that he doesn't have... Uh, any good justifiable justifiable reason to continue shooting to continue shooting at him I would argue that uh, He does have good reason to shoot at this guy and he has the perfect perfect backdrop to be able to do this so um, This guy shot at him and he tried to murder him. So it's green light as far as I'm concerned uh all green lights through all the intersections. There's no red lights coming up on this. Um, he, there was another reason why he shot. And in my opinion, I think that he um, could have continued to fire as this guy was um, traversing down this uh, parking lot with a concrete wall behind him and lots of nice thick earth behind him as well. High earth and then up here if he did have one round go a little bit too high there's more concrete right there so i think this was probably some of the best uh shooting angles that he could have ever wished for that anyone could have ever wished for and i personally would have liked to have seen him just get a, a beat on him and just start lighting him up as he's going along this way um because you're not going to get this kind of backdrop um, very often that would make it safe for the rest of the citizens. And I don't want to jump too far ahead um, in what's going on with the video or what's coming up later, but later on in the video, he's outside of a store and one of the officers says, we cannot let him go inside that store and take a hostage. And that is a very damn good uh, mindset. It, that was that is a damn good viable reason to shoot someone who could be a threat to others and i would argue that since this guy has shot the police officer and he's now running away there's also the possibility that he could try to take um someone hostage on the street and as we get to see later on through uh at, towards the end of the video the store that he runs up on, he does try to get into another person's vehicle. So I think that this should have been the point where the officer just did a fucking mag dump on this guy. Um, 
I mean, not like in the total sense of a mag dump, just, you know, rapid firing. But, I mean, I think this officer should have started firing right here, right now, and fired until slide lock. Um, get a beat on this guy and, and put rounds in him and drop him before he can get around there and into the rest of the public. But he doesn't. So, like I said, uh, we don't know what he got to see. Um, back it up. We don't know what he got to see at this point. Today, we're going to be running with the gun down. We don't know what he saw. Put the gun down. Because the footage kind of sucks. Um, it is what it is. But there was something that made him fire. And... Put the gun down! As I said... Drop the gun! This was perfect background for him to continue shooting at him. And not have really a whole lot of worry about, you know, innocent bystanders being hit. I mean, concrete wall, lots of dirt, lots of earth. Perfect backdrop. Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Come here! Three metro one, he's running. Southbound. Drop the gun! Put your hands in the air! 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 Put your... Don't do it, man! <laughs> so, we, we go from in a... And this is a split second almost. We go from him chasing the guy who has tried to kill him and the officer has returned fire at him and now the officer is pleading with the guy, um, presumably, um, pleading with the guy not to kill himself. Don't do it! Don't do it! Don't do it! Put your hands in the air! Put your hands in the air! Let me see your hands! Let Stop! Or he could have just been telling him to, um, when he said don't do it, um, as in don't, don't shoot me. Uh, not really sure the clear, uh, the clarification on that, um, again, because you can't see um, very much in the footage. He's just a blurry figure in the distance. Now, what we get to is this officer has fired the slide lock, and he's doing a magazine exchange here. Put your hands in the air! Put your hands in the air! Put Three Metro, when he's still southbound, he's armed with a firearm. He's running in the middle of the street. He has a firearm in his right hand. Let me see your hands! So, it looks like he tried to get into um, this vehicle over here, because now we see him um, emerging right in here. So, and it doesn't specify which vehicle he's in, but we see a driver right there, and it's possible he tried to get in this vehicle that we see right here. Put your hands up! Put your hands up! So the guy obviously had uh, pointed the gun right back at the officers again, and he goes down, and he's still got the gun in his hand, and he's refusing to drop the gun. This is another green light, in my opinion. Um, I think they could have uh, continued shooting, and it'd be justified, because um, 
this guy could have very easily just, you know, raised his arm and continued to shoot at them. And as I've talked about numerous times before, action beats reaction. He could have fired two, one to two rounds uh, before these officers could have fired one round off. Drop the gun! 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 And I just want to say that this officer has been shot at and has had to fight for his life um, three times now. He's had to fire three times. And he did a lot of running. And he's able to speak pretty clear and he it does not sound like he's sucking for air. Drop the gun! Uh, I know that uh, uh, me, I've, you know, I've slacked off a little bit in the exercise department. Um, I would say at this point, I would have been like sucking air hard and, you know, got to give it to this guy. Um, he, he done, he's done good so far with, with all the shooting and, and being shot at and almost killed and all the running and talking and acting like, you know, not really much has happened at all. <laughs> um, I just, that just popped in my head and I wanted to bring it up. Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop it! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Just keep it pointed in. Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop it, dude! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Someone's in his last position. Someone's in a driver's seat. Back this up. So he's talking about this this white SUV right here. And when he first initially came around it, uh, you can see that there's a person in there. And throughout this entire interaction, this person has stayed put in the vehicle. And, you know, that person could have been scared. Um, I mean, that's, that's a very good possibility. Uh, you know, this random dude just got in their car. Uh, police coming around. Gun fires are happening. Um, they could be frozen in fear. Um, if, you know, if you were to ever, you know, find yourself caught in that kind of scenario, 
um, you would want to get the hell out of there because if that guy has started shooting um, at the police and the police all started shooting back, um, you know, sometimes, and not just sometimes, a lot of times, police don't always hit the target with every single round that they fire. Some rounds miss, and we're going to see towards the end of this video that there's some rounds that miss the guy, and with that being said, do you really want to be in between the bad guy and the police when a shootout occurs? Hell no. Um, this person, um, what I, I would have liked to have seen this, two things. One, I would, have, I would have liked to have seen that person just egress out of the vehicle, um, with their, you know, hands up that way, you know, no one thinks that, uh, something's going on with them and just get the hell out of there. Leave the vehicle there. Um, you know, take the keys with you. Uh, that way the dude, you know, someone just couldn't get back in the vehicle and take off with it. Um, get out and beat feet, get away from there and, um, uh, don't come back until the whole thing's over with. You can, you can replace your car, you can replace the windshield, etc. But uh, you can't obviously replace yourself. So if you find yourself in something like this and there's guns and stuff around, uh, if you can't drive away, one, you should always, you know, just drive, get the hell out of there. But in a scenario like this where they'd have to back up and then, you know, run into the officer or whatever, if you just can't drive out of there, exit the vehicle and, and use feet. Just just walk away or run away, jog away, whatever. Um, just get the hell away from there. Um, one of the other things I would have liked to have seen is one of the officers um, giving this person in the vehicle commands to, to get the hell out of there and, and go somewhere else. Um, but they didn't. Um, and it could be that those other officers just didn't notice it. They were so focused on the dude. Obviously, this guy um, recognized the fact that someone was in there because he obviously mentions it to other people but uh that's a that's a bad place to be um is in between two people who are going to be shooting it out someone's in his wife's position someone's in a driver's seat the cars at the intersection i'm looking Madrano, stay where you're at. Do not move. Alright, you guys, the firearm is down right now. Let's take a breath. Madrid, watch the cover of your muzzle. Come on, bud, put the firearm down. We do not want to hurt you. Put your gun away. Put the firearm down! We do not want to hurt you! Okay, I can the car stop. Question My car is at East Collin when I, did, I wasn't able to hurry on park. Stand to your right. You push up over Keep right! Everything's going to be all right, man. I need you to put that gun down. You guys, we're not letting him make it into the school. He's already shot at us, correct? He shot at me, sir. Huh? He shot at me. All right, we already have a 998 on an officer. Do not let him get into that store. We cannot have a hostage situation. So that's the what I was talking about way earlier when um, the guy was running along the concrete wall with all the dirt behind him. Um, you know, they made the point that if he goes into that building, he could take a hostage. And um, he's implying that they're going to have to shoot him down uh, before he goes in that building. And I've covered another, another video where a guy with a knife is uh, evading the police and um, he comes up on a gas station and he's going towards the door to about to go inside and officers light him up and 
Um, you know, that is a, a justification um, because you, you don't know what that person is going to do. Um, they've obviously are, are not following any instructions whatsoever. Um, they're armed with a weapon and you just can't, you just can't hope uh, that all the person is wanting to do is just continue to run away and that's going to be it. Uh, you have to be practical um, and, and logical and assume that the dude's going to take a hostage and things can go even further south than that. So um, my point earlier is um, when the guy was running in through that parking lot, still trying to evade, uh, really think the officer would have had good justification in, in continuing to use deadly force against the guy to prevent him from uh, going back out on the roadway and, and potentially stopping a motorist and, and trying to take a hostage. Um, he's a, an armed and, and dangerous fleeing felon who is a danger to society. He is a active threat. And right now, in this instance, what they're implying is this guy, if he goes in the building, um, he is a threat to other people and they're going to shoot him if he tries to go inside that store because they cannot allow him to take a hostage. If it would be justified to shoot him running away from them and going to a building, then I think it would have been justified way earlier for the officer to just shoot him as he is running along that wall. For approximately five minutes, officers attempt to get the suspect to drop the firearm and surrender. The store surveillance footage also captures another angle of the events which transpired. The following video is store surveillance, which begins as the suspect raises one hand and begins counting down from three before raising the firearm towards officers. At that point, multiple officers fire at the suspect. This video has no audio. All right, so I'll pause it. Um, and I'm going to hit replay on this multiple times so you can see what's going on. Again, there's no audio on this, but we see the guy sitting right there. And he's going to raise his hand, and they're going to shoot. And then it's going to they're going to quickly start to transition the screen uh, to something else. They don't really show a whole lot. Which is typical of most agencies. They don't, you know, want to show people bleeding out or whatever. But uh, you will see him start to get hit and go backwards. And then the reason why I'm going to do the replay is I'm going to show you uh, one over in here where bullets hit the truck, and then over in here where bullets hit. So he's counting down. Right here, counting down. And he raised that hand up. And that's why I'm talking about this transition where they try to they show him go back, but then they try to transition the slide. So I'll hit um, the five second rewind. And focus, you can kind of focus on him for this replay. Just watch what he's doing. Boom. You can see his right hand. He started to raise it up and they started to open fire on him. Now, I'm going to back it up again, and this time I want you to focus right here where the cursor is circling at. Just focus right here on the bed of the truck. Actually, let me take that back. Let's go back to where this guy is at, because I want you to focus on the pavement right out in here. Don't watch him, but rather watch the pavement out in here. Officers. Nope, sorry. Up in here is where it should have been. So you will see rounds ricocheting off the ground in the pavement over in here. Officer. Now, two things that could have either been that could have either been him jerking his trigger and a round went off on the ground, or it could have been the police shooting at him and they missed him and hit the ground. Um, not really sure 
but uh, I, I'm really sure <laughs> that uh, when you focus right here on the bed of the truck, these are the rounds coming from the police. So pay attention to this part of the truck right here. All right, again. One more time. All right, now I'll pause it. Now I want you to focus over in this area. Um, just focus right in here and I'll hit play. All right, again. Again. And I'll hit replay so I can hit the pause button. So we saw um, mult officers rendered medical aid to the suspect. Sorry about that. I thought I had it paused. It paused. Yes, yeah, paused. All right. So um, we this one's questionable. It could have been him firing his gun off as he's going down, but we know for sure that these over here are the police bullets hitting. And that's why I was talking about earlier about that person being in that white SUV and that being not really a good place to be at. Um, it's very common in gunfights for people to miss. And you see it a lot in videos that are posted. And, of course, you'll see them if you ever look through uh, crime scene photos and whatnot. You'll see where people miss. And... Um, when I was talking earlier about the guy running along the concrete wall and the big pile of earth behind him, uh, that would have been, that was, not would have been, that was the, the, the perfect backdrop uh, to continue shooting at that guy. The safest backdrop to continue shooting at that guy. Uh, now where they're at, um, there's more people around. You know, that person in the SUV could have been shot. Uh, I'm hoping that there was no one in this pickup truck that got shot. Um, I mean, I, I have no idea if there's someone in it or not. I would have hoped that if there if there was, uh, that uh, they would have gotten out and, and ran away. But uh, the bullets hitting the wall, uh, of course, you know, you can't see what kind of wall it is uh, from this angle and even from the other angles from the body cam footage. I mean, the bullets could have just stopped into the wall. Uh, depending on its uh, composition, or they could have went through the wall and hit people on the inside of the building, or you know they could have hit these little propane tanks right here and um, um, had an unscheduled barbecue. So um, way earlier in the video, uh, when the guys running along the concrete wall with all the earth behind them, that should have been the time, in my opinion, for that officer to continue shooting at this guy. And stop him um, in his tracks. But like I said, it's pretty common for uh, people to miss um, in gunfights. And since we see the police um, getting gunfights with bad people a lot in videos, instead of just seeing, you know, um, random armed citizens uh, getting in self defense shootings with, you know, videos showing it, um, we get. We're obviously seeing the police uh, miss a whole lot, and that's there's a that's saying a lot too, because when you think about it, police in most cases will generally have a little bit more firearms training than the average person, a little bit more trigger time than the average person. Now, there are some people who are out there who are armed citizens and they have no police background, they have no desire to be the police and they got a hell of a lot more firearms training than the police do. There's some people who have uh, SWAT team level training uh, when it comes to firearms and they're fucking computer nerds. <laughs> um, they're, they're doctors, they're chiropractors, they're they're just everyday regular people, and they they just really take firearms training serious. And um, but anyway, uh, the police they get uh, you know they get more training than the average person, and they're still missing. They're trained. They get to train and practice with more rounds 
than an average person does. They probably shoot uh, their gun more than an average person does. And yet, they are still missing a lot. Imagine what average people would be doing in this instance. I would venture to say that uh, there would be some, some average people who would be missing a whole lot more. And bullets would be going um, a lot uh, wilder. Just a random thought uh, to throw out there. But anyway, continuing on. Officers rendered medical aid to the suspect, and he was transported to an area hospital, where he later succumbed to his injuries. A firearm was recovered from the suspect. Six officers discharged their firearms. All of the officers had activated body cameras. However, due to them utilizing unoccupied vehicles as cover and distance, the video is obstructed. No one else was injured during this event, including the adult female and two juvenile passengers in the suspect's vehicle. During the initial shooting, as the suspect fled his vehicle after the collision, the officer's vehicle was struck several times. So remember that um, when this officer pulls up and he starts to throw his car in park and get out, this dude's shooting at him. And he was obviously aiming to kill this officer. Um, I saw like he was just trying to fire, pop some rounds off in the air and, you know, get his head down and, and make him stay there and not chase him or anything. This guy was trying to kill the officer. Um, shooting, I mean, look at the trajectory here. Aiming right for the driver's seat. This is an ongoing investigation. Conclusions about the involved officer's actions with regard to law and policy will not be made until all facts are known and the investigation is complete. The Bakersfield Police Department's use of force policy, including deadly force policy, is available to the public at www. All right, so that's uh, the end of their um, public relations, blah, blah, blah. So I'm not going to go any further. Um, not much yeah. else to say about this video. I uh, covered all the points that uh, I was wanting to make. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, Obviously, this officer is justified in using the amount of uh, deadly physical force that he did. Um, in fact, I, I would say that I wish he would have used more force and shot at this guy some more. But um, but he didn't. And um, he defended himself. He used cover. He put the... the the vehicle in between him and the bad guy and uh, he didn't he didn't bow down he didn't stay out of the fight um, he chased this guy down and uh, shot at him some more uh, shot at him um, two more times after this and um, stay in the fight kept going after him and um, <laughs> you know even there towards the end after all that shooting and all that running uh, it didn't sound like it take took that big of a, a toll on the guy um, good use of force. Um, I don't believe that he violated this guy's rights in any way. Um, and as I've said before, as it is in the majority, 99% of these videos, 99.9% .9 of these videos, uh, that dude brought this upon himself. Um, he made the choice to die that day by shooting at the police. And no one else is to blame but him. I want to, you know, people always want to put blame on the police, you know, saying the police are trigger happy or, or coming up with some indirect blame, you know, socioeconomic problems, you know, he's in, in poverty, uh, systemic racism, bullshit, you know. No, this dude pulled a fucking gun on a police officer and tried to kill him. He brought this shit upon himself. Um, he played a stupid game and he won a stupid prize. So, 
good on the officer. He did nothing wrong, in my opinion, as far as the shooting. The only thing that I would I would gripe about that this officer did was at the very beginning, um, just some of his positioning without a backing officer. You know, I didn't really care a whole lot for him being bent over at the open car door, both hands occupied, trying to find the stupid VIN number, uh, and he's the only one there. Um, during when he first initially started the chase, he put the gun in between his legs. Was not a big fan of that at all. Uh, that's probably the, the 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 worst thing I've seen in this video. Um, and I would say that, I mean, <laughs> um, everything else was good um, per se, except for that one. That is a complete 100% fucking no go. You don't stick your gun. Uh, in your crotch like that um, in a fight and chasing someone it goes back in your holster um, and I would have liked to have seen them shoot a little bit more especially uh, where we had that concrete wall and all that earth in the background that would have been perfect opportunity just to keep shooting at this guy and put him down uh, before he could go harm other people take a hostage whatever so good shoot in my opinion only uh, big no-no uh, out of this video was sticking the gun uh, down to his crotch area in the middle of a pursuit. Um, that's it. That's all i got to say. If you like what you see in here on this, go ahead and give me a like and a share. If you have not already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more Monday quarterback videos. This is Earl Henderson with Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching.